Welcome back to the silage zone. It's that time of year that we're all excited about and that's silage chopping. Just wanted to give you a brief update. It looks like the plant moistures are quote unquote declining faster than what the milk line's increasing across northern Wisconsin, central Minnesota. We've had a lot of GDUs, had a lot of dry weather, and this last hot spell just pushed everything along to where we're finding out that the crop moisture, total plant moisture is getting ahead of the milk line as far as decreasing ahead of where it should be. So as an example, just shook out a farm here where we ended up with 13% on the top screen, 54% on the eight millimeter screen, about 18% on the third screen and about, I think it was 14 or 15% on the bottom pan. But with this, you can see half of what's on our top screen could end up becoming a sort by the cows that'll be a challenge. So I go back to some of the work that we've talked about in previous silage zone modules in regards to just chop length. And I wanna show you a few slides that I think are informative about that. It was a study done up at Minor Institute where they took low UNDF 240 silage or hay and high UNDF 240 hay, did different chop lengths and what they found was they could change the performance of that diet by the chop link that was involved. And so when you look at the first slide, the first two diets were the low UNDF 240, and then the two diet three and four were high UNDF 240. Number one diet was a small chop, so to speak, small length. Third one was small, the Second and fourth diets were longer chops. So in effect, we're changing what they decided to call PEUNDF 240, which was physically effective fiber times the UNDF 240. And you can see in the next slide, the responses were very informative. The first three diets, there was no significant difference in energy correct in milk, but on that fourth diet with the longer chop and the higher UNDF 240, it was significantly lower. I think that's critical when you look at the next slide about how easily that tracks with this new factor of PE UNDF 240 and energy corrected milk yield, a very high efficient or coefficient of variation at 78, uh, very, very well related to each other. There's a lot of other good things about it. One thing is it can reduce the amount of time that a cow is at the bunk. They can reduce total time at the bunk by maybe up to 30 minutes a day. And when you think about a pen of cows that may be pushed on stocking density, that's a big deal. And the rumination seems to be affected a lot less. Next slide's interesting where a study from back in 2011, they showed that the actual length of chop and the fiber digestibility has a major impact on the number of chews per gram of NDF. And all of it ends up at that eight to 12 size in the bolus. So why start off with something really long and make the cows do a lot of extra processing on their own? So time spent at the feeding bunk can be a big deal if our forage length is too long, longer than what it needs to be for effective rumination and if our UNDF 240 happens to be kind of high where it's not that digestible of fiber. So if we can get them up to the bunk, eat quicker, less sorting, and they can get back and lay down and make more milk. Miner suggested that we look at a TMR at somewhere in that two to 5% range. And I think we've got to make sure that, that what's on that top isn't overly long or it's just going to get sorted out anyway and get pushed down to the lagoon. Over 50% on that second one, 10 to 20 on the third, 25 to 30 on the bottom. Ends up with a great system. Next slide just shows, hey, depending on where you're at in your total TMR, move one way or the other based on the quality and the moisture of what you have to chop. So what can we look for with being correct about our particle length? We can reduce or maybe even come close to eliminate sorting. They're gonna eat quicker and be able to lay down sooner, let somebody else get up with fewer displacements at the bunk. And then we've got the chance to maximize slash optimize our forage digestibility. So again, I think it's a great time to get out there. 
Have someone shake out your silage, shake out your TMR, make sure that you're getting the proper length on all your cuts, and I think you'll end up with something that you're gonna be happy with throughout the coming year. And it's moving quicker than what we would like it to see on the moisture, so get out there and get her done quick before it gets too dry on you. And again, that may mean you have to decrease your particle length just so you can get it packed better. Thanks, hope you have a great harvest. Reach out to your local Pioneer Agency or myself with any questions. We look forward to having a great harvest and a safe one. Thanks. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.